now going to look at each of the effects on each track and uh, I'll explain why they're there and what their purpose is. So start off with the kick drum, uh, which sounds like this. So let's have a look what's going on. So I've put three effects on there, a noise gate, a compressor and a graphic EQ. Let me just bypass them all so you can hear what the original situation was. So it's quite a clicky kick drum. Um, somewhere else around here, you can hear some bleed from the snare drum. So that's why I've applied a noise gate. With a really quick attack and a quick release, the smallest it goes to is 100 milliseconds, which is fine for a kick drum. Um, then to even out some of the dynamics, I've loaded a BL1176 compressor found under dynamics and I've boosted the input by 14 dB. I put a really high ratio of 8 to 1, quick attack, quick release. So what that's going to do is as soon as the signal gets too loud, it's going to get brought down by a factor of 8 to 1 um, and we're going to get consistent kick drums. And then finally, I've added a graphic EQ just to shape the tone a bit. So what I've done is I've reduced 200, 400, and 800 hertz, uh, boosted 100 hertz where the low thump of the kick drum lies, and then we've got the slap, the clicky part of the kick drum in the higher frequencies, so I've boosted 1.6, 3.2, and then I've also reduced 6.4K. Um, so here's what it sounds like. And then without all of these effects, taking care of some of that bleed um, and hopefully made it a bit more punchy. Moving on to the snare. So the snare track sounds like this. Just need to turn the volume down a bit because it's clipping. Over here you can see a little red dot. Okay, so I've got a um, high pass filter on there and um, what that's doing is it's reducing all the frequencies before 100 hertz. Um, so that's removing all of the low thump, all of the low energy from the kick drum. Um, and then I've got three peaking filters to remove some of the ringing that you can hear on the snare. So if I take this off, you can hear quite a lot of ringing, especially in this area here. So with these, use those to remove them and I'll just demonstrate how to use one of these so multi filter and then I've set it to peaking and what I do is instead of cut I boost and then I slowly uh, move the frequency around until I find the ringing tone um, I've set the cue to the highest amount which means it's going to be a really shallow um, shallow band uh, which is either um, cut or boost so as I move this around, you'll hear it change. So let me just set up a little loop so you can hear it. So you can hear at around 823 hertz that uh, ringing has been um, boosted by quite a lot, which means that ringing is located at that frequency there. Once you've found it, you can just cut it. And there we go. Now you can get rid of some ringing. Um, I've just added a graphic EQ towards the end. And then finally, to compress the snare, I'm going to add a compressor found in the dynamics. Again, I'm going to use the P1176. High compression of 8 to 1. And then uh, this area here, we've got quite loud snares followed by quite quiet snares. Let's see if the difference is less. So 
yeah, that's squished um, the dynamic range a little bit more. As I, as I boost this, you'll hear. You hear that dynamic range get uh, reduced. Moving on to the rack tom. What do I have? Uh, a noise gate. That's because the rack tom's got loads of bleed until it actually gets used around here. So the noise gate stops the bleed. With it on, gone. Uh, all you have to worry about there is setting the release so it catches the full sound. So let's just cycle through this area here. And then all you have to do is just make sure that that threshold setting works for all of your other toms. Yeah, works for there. I think that's the quietest tom. The next track uh, just has a compressor on it just to squish it um, because I'm just using it as an ambient thing. Really heavily compressed just to add that atmosphere in the background, that excitement. Uh, floor tom, same as the high tom, uh, just with a slightly different threshold setting and a different uh, release setting to make sure I capture the toms, which is just here. So even there, I could do with a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, bass, where are we? Okay, bass was in need of quite um, quite a lot of effects, in my opinion. If we start off, it sounds like this. Quite a lot of distortion, quite a lot of upper, mid frequencies. Um, so first off, I added a high pass filter to get rid of the frequencies below 40 hertz. Then I added a graphic EQ to get rid of 400 and 800 hertz. Not get rid of, but cut those frequencies because That's where most of the distortion was based, and I wasn't too happy with, with the sound of it. Um, I've left in some of these uh, presence frequencies here, because um, if not, it sounds like it's in the room next door, uh, behind a wall or behind a curtain. We've got a compressor, again, high compression setting ratio, and uh, that's just to stop the dynamic range, because there are some quiet notes here and there where he's misplayed them. Um, We've got an amplifier and a cap, and uh, just on basic bass settings. Um, and I've tried out different microphones, and eventually I settled for the BLA 1177. 11, uh, sorry, BL 87. Over to the guitar, uh, multi filter, a graphic EQ, multi filter to get rid of the low frequencies that it doesn't produce, um, graphic EQ uh, just to remove some of the presence so it allows the vocal to pop out a little bit more, and then a compressor to just squish some of those, um, some of the changes in volume. The vocals, high pass filter again, graphic EQ. Um, and a compressor. Sorry, <laughs> on the there we go on the vocals. Got a high pass filter, graphic EQ. This time boosting the presence, bringing that vocal forward in the mix. A deesser to stop the S's. Uh, the BL eleven seventy six on an eight to one, so quite a lot of compression. And then a digital delay. Um, yeah, just just to add some. Um, some reflections in the background, and what I've done is I move the time, I increase the wet level so it's really loud and obnoxious, and then what I did is I changed the time slowly until it was in time with the music, and then I lowered the wet, vel uh, the wet level. Uh, touch of reverb, just to give it some depth, and then uh, just some high pass filters on the last two. And that's all the effects that I've used on this track.